our final topic in module 12 is retroviruses. Retroviruses are single-stranded positive strand envelope viruses. They were discovered in the 1960s and 70s and Baltimore and Temin independently demonstrated reverse transcriptase. Howard Temin was a professor at this university and he actually, he in Baltimore won the Nobel Prize for this discovery. I was lucky enough to actually be a TA of his. Retroviruses can actually be classified into three different groups. The Oncovirinae, showing the viruses there. The Lentivirinae, which have HIV-1 and HIV-2, which is the topic of this lecture. And the Spumavirinae, which are human fomiviruses. Interestingly, if you do some sequence gazing of the human genome, you find out there are similar sequences to retroviruses within that genome. And it seems like these things have been with us for millions of years and replicated. And these are viruses that have inserted and then lost the capability to cause disease anymore because they've you know, had deletions in some of their viral functions. HIV was first noted in the 1980s and has spread to epidemic proportions worldwide. It's similar to the simian immunodeficiency viruses and probably emerged in the 1930s in Africa. The disease spreads through sexual contact and contaminated blood. It is present in blood, semen, and vaginal secretions of infected individuals. There is a long period of asymptomatic infection and the virus only spreads by sexual contact because it's easily inactivated when it is outside the body. It is not transmitted by casual contact. HIV is an envelope virus with two glycoproteins forming the surface envelope protein that inserts into the membrane. Inside the membrane is a matrix protein that forms a shell. The nucleocapsid, which is inside the matrix, holds the genome which consists of two identical copies of a positive single-stranded RNA. Attached to one end of the nucleic acid is an RNA polymerase and an integrase is also present inside the nucleocapsid. The genome is divided into GAG, POL, and ENV regions, but due to differential splicing during expression, HIV can synthesize many different proteins. HIV binds to the CD4 receptor and a co-receptor, which is a chemokine co-receptor for entry. So it has to bind to two proteins to enter. After uncoating at the membrane surface, the viral core is placed into the cytoplasm. The viral RNA is then copied into DNA by its RNA replicase. So this is an RNA dependent DNA polymerase, a reverse transcriptase, so that's a very unusual protein. The viral RNA is copied into DNA. This then copied DNA moves to the nuclease where the integrase integrates it into the host genome. In an active infection, expression of transcripts and splicing occurs, resulting in various messenger RNAs. These are expressed in the ribosome and either migrate back to the nucleus or are translated into the membrane if they are an envelope protein. Viral genomic RNA is made, associates with the viral RNA binding proteins in the cytoplasm to form viral cores, and the core matrix and envelope proteins then assemble at the membrane and bud from the cell. HIV pathogenesis. The virus targets CD4 plus cells. These are T cells and macrophages. And if you remember our lectures on the immune system, those are pivotal in expression of the immune system. HIV is so deadly because it eliminates the victim's immune system. Remember that each cell has a co-receptor. In macrophages, it's CCR5. In T cells, it's CXCR4. And you have to have this to be infected by the virus. Macrophages are initially infected and may be persistently infected and serve as reservoirs because remember this virus inserts into the genome and sometimes it will just sit there for many years before you start to have an active infection. When the virus infects T cells, 
it can be cytolytic, which means it kills the T cells, and it can also cause the T cells to actually fuse together and make these giant cells, but also that inactivates their ability to carry out their function. The disease results in the dissemination of the immune response. And as you can see, if you look at the viral load in a person and what happens over time, slowly the activity of their immune system decreases and then over the period of about 72 months, they eventually have very little immune system and this is systemic immune deficiency that leads to their death. Most HIV infected people will become symptomatic and succumb to the disease without treatment. It progresses from an asymptomatic nonspecific illness characterized as flu-like with a rash, but these symptoms subside. There's a period of asymptomatic infection that follows, and this is particularly insidious for this disease because that is the time when this individual doesn't know they're ill and they can be spreading the disease to others. There's a gradual deterioration of the immune system because of reduction in T cell count, and that increases susceptibility to opportunistic pathogens. AIDS, which is uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, occurs when a person is tested positive for HIV and either the CD4 T cell counts are under 200 or their CD4 T cell counts are, are higher than 200, but they get start to get a list of conditions associated with AIDS. The complications that you get are opportunistic infections, such as fungal and parasitic infections, Candida albicans infections, pneumocystis infections, toxoplasma, etc. You can get several viral infections that are unusual that can be serious. You'll get bacterial diseases, tuberculosis, enteric infections. You can get malignancies such as Carposi sarcoma. Dementia also occurs, and this is because of opportunistic infection or HIV infection of brain cells. And then just the general wasting from feeling terrible. HIV is distributed worldwide with some of the most serious cases occurring now in sub-Saharan Africa. A wide arsenal of drugs have been developed to combat HIV, including reverse transcriptase inhibitors that stop the polymerase, protease inhibitors that stop the proteases of HIV, fusion inhibitors that stop the fusion of the cell and its interest into the cell, CCR5 antagonists that interfere with attachment to cells because they stop this co-receptor from binding, and finally integrase inhibitors that prevent the DNA from integrating into the chromosome of the humans. These treatments have been so successful that an HIV plus individual will eventually have no detectable virus in their system if they undergo these treatments. Due to the integration of HIV into the DNA, if treatment is stopped, HIV will reemerge and then cause disease. So you have to be on these drugs for a lifetime. However, there have been incidences in the last few years where people have been cured of HIV by going through a bone marrow transplant. They've gotten cancer, they've had to have a bone marrow transplant, the bone marrow transplant has worked, but it's also eliminated HIV from their bodies. This may give an idea of how to treat this disease in the future, and CRISPR does hold the possibility of completely eliminating it. Okay, that is the last lecture on unhealthy microbial interactions.